Hi everyone, welcome back to Virtual Storytime. Today we're gonna listen to a folktale, and you might be familiar with the German version of this folktale called Hansel and Gretel, and today we're gonna listen to the Balinese version that's called The Dancing Pig by Judy Sierra. Our folktale today will take place on the Indonesian island of Bali. The Dancing Pig by Judy Sierra. On the island of Bali, in a small house nestled between a dark forest and sunny rice fields, a woman lived with her twin daughters, Claudin and Clonching. Every day, the girls swept the house and the paths all around it. As they worked, they were careful not to harm any living thing, no matter how small. When Claudin finished sweeping, she would always leave a bit of food on the ground beside a mouse hole, then wait for a little furry creature to nibble it. Crick, crick, crick. Just before sunset each day, the twins carried rice hulls and water to the family's pig. How lonely you must be, Clunching would say, with no one to keep you company. So the girls would dance the lagong for her while frogs made music. First, the tree frogs began, get, 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 get. And then the bullfrogs joined in with their low, gong, 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 gong. And all together they would sing, get, get, gong, gong, get, get, gong, gong, get, get, gong, gong. This made the pig grunt happily. In the forest shadows, someone was hiding and watching. It was the Rangsasa, an ogress or female ogre who lived beyond the graveyard. The Rangsasa had round eyes to see everything and big ears to hear everything and long, sharp fingernails to reach out and grab little ones like Claudin and Clunching. She wanted so badly to seize the twins as they danced, but she didn't dare as long as their mother was nearby. One morning, the girl's mother sat down with them. Our money is nearly gone, she said with a sigh, so I must go to the market and sell nanka seeds. Promise me that while I am away, you will stay inside the house and keep the doors and windows locked, just in case the Rangsasa should come. Take us with you to the market, the twins begged. It is too far, their mother told them. You must stay here. When I return, I will knock three times and say, Claudin, Clanching, it's your mother, let me in. Only then may you open the door. The Rangsasa watched and listened that day, and the next day, and the next. Each day, the girl's mother arrived home just before sunset. In the afternoon of the fourth day, the ogress herself stepped through the gate and knocked at the door. Her voice was low and rough. Clodden, clanching, it's your mother, let me in. That's not our mother's voice, Clanching cried out. The Rangsasa went back outside the gate. She practiced making her voice very sweet. Then she knocked at the door again. Clodden, Clanching, it's your mother, let me in. Go away, shouted Clodden, you are not our mother. The Rangsasa raced home. She cooked up a potion of tung fruit and tuba genu root and the scorched bark of a latengu tree. She lifted the pot to her lips and poured the hot mixture down her throat. Her insides started to itch. Her belly began to burn. She jumped up and down, chanting, Clodden, clanching, Clodden, clanching, until she sounded exactly like the girl's mother. Clodden, clanching. And then, she hurried back to the house and knocked at the door. Clodden, clanching, it's your mother, let me in. Mother, the twins cried, at last you're home. And they unlocked the door and rushed outside. The Rangsasa grabbed Clodden with her right hand and clanching with her left. Clutching the twins tightly with her fingernails, she carried them to her house. She pushed the two girls into a wooden chest, closed the lid and tied it with a rope. Then she stoked the cooking fire and waited for it to blaze. When the twins' mother arrived home, she found the door of the house open. Clodden, clanching, you naughty girl, she shouted. Where are you? She lit a lantern and ran to all corners of the compound, frantically calling her daughter's names. She was surprised to see the pig standing up on her hind legs. She was even more surprised when the animal spoke to her. 
The Rangsasa has stolen Clodden and Clonching, said the pig. But if you promise to do everything I say, my friends and I can bring them home safely. I will do anything, said the mother. Take me to your house, said the pig, and dress me in your best sarong and finest jewelry. The mother did as she was told. She stretched a sarong around the pig's middle and tied it with a sash. I need two dance fans, the pig told her, and the mother got those as well. She tucked a fresh flower behind each of the animal's ears. A mouse appeared, carrying a tiny torch, and then the frogs arrived. One tree frog held a tiny flute and the other a pair of cymbals. A big bullfrog carried a gong while a smaller one toted a drum. The mother watched this strange procession march out the gate of the compound. The mouse led the way, quiet and watchful, and the frogs and the pig tiptoed along behind her. On they walked, until at last they reached a clearing not far from the Rangsasa's house. Then the pig hid behind a tree, and the frogs began to play and sing. Kek kek, gong gong, kek kek, gong gong, kek kek, gong gong. The sound soon reached the Rangsasa's ears. It charmed her out of her house and drew her into the clearing. Whoa, she exclaimed when she saw the frogs. I have lived a long time, but never have I seen such a tiny gamelan orchestra. She was even more surprised when a pig stepped into the torchlight and began to dance the lagong. The pig swayed and turned gracefully, flicking her fans to the rhythm of the music as her eyes flashed left and then right. The lagong is a dance for two, and soon the Rangsasa felt herself pulled along by the frog's plane. The pig handed her a fan, and together they circled and danced. As soon as the Rangsasa began to dance, the mouse scurried inside her house and climbed onto the wooden chest. Don't worry, Cladden and Clonching, the mouse chirped, and she began to chew the rope. Crick, 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 crick. Now push, said the mouse. Clodden and Clonching lifted the lid and stepped out to freedom. Take as much of the Rangsasa's treasure as you can carry, the mouse told the girls. She will not need it anymore. While the twins gathered jewels and gold, the mouse nudged a red-hot ember from the Rangsasa's cooking fire onto the floor. The twins followed the mouse, their hearts beating quickly. They were so afraid that the Rangsasa would see them. But the frog's music held her in its spell. On and on they played and sang while the pig and the ogress danced the lagong. Suddenly, the Rangsasa smelled smoke. She ran back inside her house, just in time to watch the four walls go up in flames all around her. Clodden and Clonching carried the Rangsasa's treasures to their mother. Never again did she have to sell fruit at the market or leave the twins alone. In the evenings, the three of them always shared their food with the pig and the mouse, while the frog serenaded them. Kek kek, gong gong, kek kek, gong gong, kek kek, gong gong. But the pig never danced again. She was content to watch the twins and grunt happily. <coughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this folktale, The Dancing Pig. For your journal writing today, I want you to answer this question. Can you describe how the animals all work together to help free the sisters? All right, everyone, take care and be safe.